Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my session. Uh, my name is Sharon Xu. I'm the senior advisor from An Advanced Analytics team at AERP. Here's another co-speaker, Ching Sun. Uh, she's a resident re solution architect from Databricks. So today, I'm going to talk about the gender prediction model, which AERP built about two years ago. Then we started to use a Databricks auto ML pipeline and some other functions to make this whole process automated. So let's start. First of all, uh, just give a pretty short uh, introduction for both of us. Uh, so I worked in AERP uh, advanced analytics team. Then my major role in this team is to help my internal clients to use a machine learning model or predictive models to target their market universe with the maximum efficiency, like low, lowest cost or highest response uh, responses. Uh, so other than modeling, I also do incremental analysis and attribution analysis just to understand each program's their value, actual value to the organization. So other than that, all the mo model-driven, data-driven um, analytics work comes to our team and it comes to me. Uh, I graduated from University of Maryland with PhD degree in civil engineering. My major was transportation demand forecasting. I know that sounds pretty different from what I'm doing now, uh, but I did benefit a lot from the model building experience during the PhD study. Uh, starting from spring this year, I have been quite busy in gardening, but not being very successful. So my ultimate goal this mm -hmm. summer is just to kill less and have some products. That's it. I will hand over to Ching to introduce herself. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Data and AI Summit 2021. My name is Ching. I'm a resident solutions architect who work with Sharon on this project. I'm also a data scientist and a machine learning expert in the uh, public federal space. So if your team and uh, your company is in the process of adopting data lake house and AI, you can reach out to me for help. Today, I'm Sharon and I are going to take you through our exciting machine learning journey at AARP and hope our experience will be something helpful to you. Let's get started. All right, thank you, Ching. Uh, so before we kick off, I would like to thank my 2018 summer intern, uh, Natish Shanhari. So he spent a lot of time on research to get the best methodology for this gender prediction model. Also complete the first draft of the model to have the pretty good performance. Uh, so our following like work to use a, uh, auto ML is based on top of his work. I also, also, I would like to thank my manager, Jerry Weiss, who proposed this interesting idea to build this uh, gender predi prediction model. Uh, so today we are going to um, walk through the background of this model and our detailed solution of the gender prediction model, and also talk about the auto ML pipeline we used to apply on this model. And of course, the learnings and the future. So first of all, a bit intro about AERP. So AERP has uh, 38 million members. So maybe some of you or your parents or grandparents are our members. So we have been championing as uh, a positive social change and delivering the values to our 50 plus members and also to encourage people to choose how they live when they age. So you can see there are um, a bunch of pictures uh, my coworker helped me to select from here. So this covers a variety of different fun activities like AERP brought to our members. Yeah. So talking about models, um, AERP has about um, over like 150 predictive models for different usages. Uh, so the, the major model scope includes these four different pillars. The first one is based on the membership. So we use models to acquire, to, to recruit members, and also to identify which members are most likely to renew or not to renew. So those acquisition models uh, are through different channels like direct mail, alt media, or legion, and we also have renewal models. 
Uh, so the second pillar of the models is for identifying people who are most likely to respond through different channels, like phone channel, email channel, or online channel. The third pillar is the biggest. Uh, it covers a lot of AERP activities, campaigns, uh, all these activities uh, we target our members you by using models, uh, including like advocacy foundation campaigns or some fun events like movies for grabs, festivals, um, like dancing parties or uh, some, something like fraud or driver safety. Yeah, a lot of online programs as well. The last pillar is about demographics. The models is used to identify people's demographics. Uh, yeah, also the imputation. Like in our database, there, there are some information missing. We usually build models to impute those missing values, such as the gender prediction model I'm going to talk about. So this is our um, big scope of AERP predictive models. So why do we need gender model? So in our AERP targeting audience universe, there are about like 2 million records they miss gender information. So this missing information, gender information will cause a less accurate profiling and also uh, less accurate targeting strategies. Uh, so that's a, some, 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 it has caused some issue. So we need to build a model to impute those missing values. Other than that, uh, this is also a pretty straightforward use case for us to test a few functions on Databricks, like ML flow or model registry, and the entire automated pipeline, just to see how it works on some prediction models. Yeah, to simplify speaking, um, gender prediction model used a random forest classifier to identify gender by using people's names and age. So only from names, there are a lot of variables derived uh, from the name by people's uh, names alphabetic order of all the letters. Here's a detail example. So in, um, in our like one name feature, it can derive about 731 different features. So how this happened? For example, the first one, um, the first portion is about the frequency of letters. I use my name and Ching's name as an example. So Sharon has only one A as one H and one N. So we're counting the frequency of each letter from people's name. The second part is a sum of position of the letters. So we look at the position of each letter. So for example, Sharon's A is at position three of the um, name, and H is at position two, and N is at position six. So if there are uh, same letters appearing in the name, we just sum all these letters position together. Then the third part is the biggest block. It's a diagram, it's a biogram. It's 26 by 26 variables. So we detect every single biogram of uh, people's names. Like Sharon, we detect S H H A A R R O O N. Um, so these biogram combinations were all flagged as one. Then the last part is like a second to last character position. Last character position, it's about like names, last two letters alphabetic position. For example, Sharon's O is at um, position 15 of the alphabetic order. N is at position 14. And we have the length of the name. So Sharon has six letters. And then it's an H. So there are a total like over 700 features derived. So uh, not just the random forest model, we used a variety of different models. Then random forest was a final winner. So it displays about 76 accuracy of the gender prediction on purely new existing names. That means that if the names is not existed in our model training data set, we can have the 76 accuracy. Um, if we have the normal data set, which includes some uh, existing names in the training data set and some new names, the model can give about 90% accuracy. 
yes, a model so far can only be used to predict the binary gender uh, because in our database, we don't have enough like non-binary data. So next, I'm going to walk through the auto ML pipeline used on this gender prediction model. Um, this is a sort of pretty um, standard like machine learning model process. So our data is saved in AWS. Uh, Databricks is built on top of that. So we pull the data from, uh, from our database, pulling like people's name, gender, and age. But the data wasn't that clean. So a lot of names has a space or has a random signs. We need to clean them up. So in the end, it was about like 800,000 distinct name gender combination. Yeah, so with a clean data set, uh, we'll use a methodology I described in the previous slide to derive about over 700 features from the names and saved in a Delta format. So Delta table definitely give us a like, faster running speed for the following steps. Then we have the model, very typical like model building and training process. Uh, we use the grid search to look for the best like parameter combination. Uh, so there were about like 18 different model runs, which took a lot of time. The ML flow helped to track all these model runs results and like evaluation metrics. So in the end, the best model was registered um, by using the model registry function. Once the best model is saved, the model is ready for deployment. We just load the model from model registry and the score on the new data set. Once everything is developed well, um, so the model is pushed into production, uh, we schedule the job to make the model retrain uh, itself and also regularly score on the new data set in the future. So after this scheduled job's done, the whole process is completely hands-free. Uh, so next I'm going to just uh, show you some screenshot of our tables or code just give the audience a better idea about what the model exactly looks like. So here this slide shows a, a clean data set, like after cleaning all the names, we have the, uh, after feature engineering step, we have all the 700 features derived from people's names um, ready for model building. Yeah, in the model building, this is what I really like, uh, Spark coding. So it, like you can see, we use a pipeline function uh, to feed feature assembler and the random forest model into the pipeline function to wrap up together. Then pipeline served to uh, cross-validation and evaluation metrics served to cross-validation and also parameter tuning steps. So all these steps are wrapped together, which is very, very well organized and very clear. Personally, I think it looks better than um, spaghetti code like in Python. Yeah, as I said, we have 18 different iterations. So all these parameter tuning steps were locked um, by ML flow to give the accuracy results. And the best model was chosen. Um, we also, logged the best models performance and matrices like parameter tuning results from the best model and all this evaluation metrics metrics uh, the best model was in the bottom of the screenshot you can see the best model was saved um, by model registry function and the best model was pushed into production and it's ready okay so once everything is set up we schedule the job. So this is a screenshot of the uh, scoring notebook. So the scoring process is scored, uh, is scheduled on the 10th of every month. So on the 10th of every month, the model will automatically score the new data set and uh, uh, send the data to our users. Okay, so here is uh, the entire process I described. So from the story of gender prediction model, this is what I learned. So first of all, the entire process uh, has been much like much faster 
So initially, our intern used Python to, to work on the parameter tuning and model training. Sometimes we had an out-of-memory issue, but by using Databricks and the PySpark, we definitely have less worry about the large data set and the tuning, different tuning iterations because of the customized clusters and parallelism settings, and also Delta helped the entire process. Uh, also, the ML flow just easily track all the model runs, and the model registry just simplify the model management work, so we can uh, better organize the, the, the models. Uh, my favorite part is uh, self-training and scoring. So the model, uh, once you schedule the job, the model can retrain itself, can score by itself without any human intervention. So yeah, so I barely need to do anything at the end. What I le learned here made me think about the rest of ERP models. So we have like uh, hundreds of other prediction, predictive models. So can we just apply the similar methodology to the other models to make the other models also automatically train and score to make the life easier? Uh, I think we can. So first of all, we are working on the integrated data platform. So ARP has been working on this for the past two years. Uh, the integrated data platform can definitely minimize the flat file intake and also avoid moving data set across different platforms, which is a pretty like annoying manual steps. Uh, also, I would encourage my modeling team to use MLflow and model registry uh, to well organize the model results and the storage um, to store the models systematically. And the last but not the least, so when building models, we need to think about to streamline the entire process, to stre streamline our coding. Um, so once the structure is set up, the model training, scoring, deployment, everything is set up, uh, we just schedule the job to let the retrain and the scoring process to run itself regularly. So this is a um, fully automation uh, work, which is a um, ideal ultimate, ultimate like uh, goal we want to reach. Yeah, so once everything is automated, I guess like my daily life is just to grab a cup of coffee, just to look at the models are all taken care of by themselves. That's the ideal work. But once I finish writing the last bullet, that may make me think about it. Like uh, what if all the models are taken care of by themselves? Like, am I going to lose my job? So yeah, Ching, what do you think? That's a good question, Sharon. So one of the core values of adopting Databricks platform, in my opinion, is increased productivity and the easiness of use. And we made it really easy for you to scale up things. So when you need to retrain, say, like 100 models, you can leverage Databricks jobs API and scripts to create automated jobs uh, for training and scoring, and leverage the same ML flow process to track your experiments, register, and promote your models. And those processes can be perfectly combined with your existing CI-CD pipeline. So even when you have hundreds of the models in, your, in production, it's no big deal. Database platform can easily support that. And we made the uh, machine learning development life cycle really easy for everyone. So the data scientists can really focus on developing more models and bringing more value to your business. So that's a huge win. Great job, Sharon. That's a fantastic story you shared today. Let's wrap it up. Thank you, Ching. So that's it. Please like send us or your feedback or your questions, and don't forget to read and review the session. Thank you for the audience. Thank you for your time.